Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics. I'm Taylor Phillips, and welcome to Taylor's Detroit Sports on Spreaker. You can also find this and all other episodes of Taylor's Detroit Sports on iHeartRadio. Straight and full Detroit and Michigan sports coverage 100% of the time. If you have any opinions on everything that's going on in the Detroit sports world, call in or send a text message live on the show at 231-429-3668. Also, you can add me on Facebook as Taylor Phillips online at facebook.com slash taylorgatorphillips14. Like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports page. Join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group. And follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips with two L's. Welcome to episode 140 of Taylor's Detroit Sports. I am Taylor Phillips. Uh, I have something big to share, some big news to share. Yesterday I heard that uh, the Pistons made a couple big trades. They traded forward Kyle Singler and and point guard DJ Augustine to the Oklahoma City Thunder for point guard Reggie Jackson. And they also reacquired forward Tayshawn Prince, who won the 2004 2004 NBA championship with them. In a trip from the Boston Celtics. For forward uh, Gigi Tatomi and and shooting guard Jonas Jerebko. And I like... I I like those trades. I'm okay with those. Reggie Jackson uh, can move the ball and uh, and score two point shots and uh, can't quite can't quite score too many threes, but uh, he can make he can make moves with the ball. He can drive down the lane. Tayshawn Prince uh, is forty year, is already forty years old, but he he's still got the uh, this total. He's still got that total two way machine in him. Prince uh, Tayshawn Prince can slam dunk the ball, hit threes, and block shots. Kind of like the way he blocked Reggie Miller's shot back in two back in two thousand four. In the Eastern, in Game Two of the Eastern Conference Finals in Indiana, when the when the Pistons beat the Pacers four games to two, and went on to win the NBA championship over the Los Angeles Lakers. But the, the bad news here is both Tayshon and Reggie are are both not eligible 
to play tonight as the Pistons welcome the Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls. Tip-off is at 7.30 on Fox Sports Detroit in HD. And, and on the radio on Detroit Sports 105.1. And on the Detroit Sports One, oh, Detroit Sports 105.1 mobile app. And on Detroit Sports 105.1.com and all the radio, all the Pistons Radio Network affiliates, including 101.1 FM WGRY in Roscommon tonight because because the Red Wings have off tonight. Speaking of the bull speaking of the Pistons and Bulls <clears throat> I have some I have some game day notes from David Mayo of of MLive.com. Chicago stood pat uh, titled Detroit Pistons Game Day after trade deadline overhaul a test against old rivals the Chicago Bulls. The line is Bulls at negative six at minus six 195 at 195 and a half Chicago stood pat, but Detroit was at forefront of a hectic Final Four before Thursday's NBA trade deadline, with the Pistons acquiring Reggie Jackson, and Tayshawn Prince, who, who played 10-plus seasons with the Pistons from 2002 to 2013. The Pistons have to replace two starters Augustine at point guard and Singler at small forward. By virtue of Thursday's moves, neither of them, neither of their incoming players in the trade, will be available tonight. They're not eligible, as I said before. Spencer Dinwiddie and Karan Butler will start tonight. The Pistons also are expected to sign D-League player Quincy Miller to a 10-day contract Saturday for help at small forward. Yesterday they agreed to that, they and Miller agreed to that 10 day contract, just like John Lucas III. The Pistons come out of the All-Star break with four consecutive home games, five total the with the All-Star game in between the first and second games. after which 15 of their last 24 on the road. The resurgent Bulls, the resurgent Bulls point guard Derrick Rose has averaged 22.3 points per game over the last 16 games. Uh, it's uh, not per game, but 22.3 points over the last 16 games. The Bulls and Oklahoma City Thunder share the longest active winning streaks in the NBA, which is four games. I will tweet this link, this article link to you. Articles saying 
in the related articles in the related articles Stan Van Gundy says the Pistons are not giving up on the injured Brandon Jennings with the Reggie Jackson trade that's on nlive.com if you want to check it out Uh, my thoughts on the Reggie Jackson trade, well, I didn't want Kyle Singler on, on the team as much as I wanted DJ Augustine to stay. Kyle Singler only shot 33% from the field. <clears throat> DJ Augustine was... Uh, doing great but only f except he only filled in Brandon filled Brandon Jennings's shoes that way but before that Augustine hadn't hadn't produced much There were rumors that there were many rumors that Jonas Jerebko was going to be going to be traded, especially to uh, the Sacramento Kings for uh, I think it was Jason Williams. I, I I'm not I don't remember, but or. Or Mo Williams of the Timberwolves. Well, the Pist Well, that actually, that had nothing to do with Jarebko. Mo, but uh, Mo Williams was one of the guys the Pistons uh, were interested in. But I think they got their guys now: Reggie Jackson and Tayshawn Prince. But both. But but speaking of both. Reggie and Tayshawn, they will be available slash eligible Sunday at three th at three thirty when they welcome the Washington Wizards, John Wall and company, into the Palace of Auburn Hills. You can catch that on Fox Sports Detroit and Detroit Sports 105.1 and and the Pistons Radio Network affiliates. That game's also on 101.1 FM WGRY in Roscommon. But if, but if the Red Wings and Pistons both play at the same time, then the Red Wings are on 101.1 FM and the Pistons are on 12.30 AM WGRY in Grayling. WGRY AM 12.30 in Grayling. It's, it's just for Pistons fans. It's not like I... It's not like I work at uh, Blarney Stone Broadcasting or anything. I, I don't know who it competes against, quite honestly, but this is just for Pistons fans. Uh, speaking of the Red Wings, they beat the Blackhawks 3-2 to in a shootout in Chicago two nights ago to start their six-game road trip. That was after Monday night when they lost 2-0 to the Montreal Canadiens. The Wings-Hawks game on NBCSN's Wednesday night rivalry with Mike, Doc Emmerich, and Eddie Olchick and Pierre Maguire was a fantastic game. A fantastic hockey game. First off, first off though, uh, the first period looked ugly in terms of shots on goal. 
It finished 17 to six in favor of in favor of the Blackhawks, who kept attacking a lot more than the Wings did. Apparently, I didn't even I, I wasn't able to, I was not able to watch the first period because I was in class Wednesday night at CMU at Central Michigan University, but I got the notification that it was no score after one with the shots on goal 17 to 6 in favor of the Hawks. Man, I was like Man, the Red Wings had better attack get back at it with the shots on goal and attack more than they did in the first period. I had to miss the second period as well because I was struggling to uh, find a spot in Mount in the city of in the town of Mount Pleasant to uh, reinflate my left foot tire, and my fingers were frostbitten. But I don't want to bore you with that. I finally, I got, because because anyway I got I got that over with, done and over with, and I walked into Buffalo Wild Wings in Mount Pleasant just in time to to watch the beginning to watch the third period begin and I saw that it was tied at one without even checking my phone I wasn't allowed I was not allowed by law to check my phone so I did so I did not when I was uh, trying to inflate my tire in, inflate my tire anyway but I heard I heard uh, constantly on social media that uh, that the Brandon Sod goal was offside, and then I that was right after Tomas Tatar put the wings up one nothing, scored the first that uh, scored the first goal of the game. By the way, if you want to chime in on on everything that I that I've talked about thus far, you can call in and and or text message on one number and that is 231-429-3668. Call in or text message live on on this episode 231-429-3668. It is also it is also being recorded for archive. Being recorded at as an archive for, for a later for a download later on but if you text uh, but if you text message please please text your name and town before you give out your as you give out your opinion name city and state but the third period Uh, the se a after two periods, though, it was 25-17 uh, shots in favor of Chicago. And the, the third period, to me, was uh, was a back and was a, a, an exhilarating back and forth hockey game, back and forth period. And then Darren Helm took it. Tomas Tatar stole the puck, passed passed it at, in front of the in front of the Blackhawks blue line to hold it in, and passed to a to a wide open Darren Helm, who shot the puck like twice or three times. It banked off. Uh, Seep, Brett Seabrook skate and into the net with 2.06 left in the third period and that was a big goal it appeared to be a big goal however uh, the Blackhawks tied it with uh, what with their net empty with 1.23 left 
in the th in the third period, just just 43 seconds later, after that helm goal, Christopher Stieg let a hard shot go. Jonathan Erickson was in front of it, but he decided to to turn away and duck like a coward. Cause he, he cause he's typically afraid to afraid too afraid and stupid to play defense in front of the net. And and the puck sailed off of uh, Jonathan Taves' shoulder and then off off of Nicholas Cronwall and into the net. It, it, it took two strange bounces, it, pinballing off of uh, Taves and Cronwall and into the net. I don't think that I don't think there was anything either, that either Nicholas Cronwall or Jimmy Howard would have done a, would have done about that. But there would have there would have been something that but there was something that Jonathan Erickson could have done about it, which was block the shot. Two three one four two nine three six six is the number to call and text message. I see Edward Lawrence Smith just like my uh, post on the Spreaker post of the Spreaker Taylor's Detroit Sports episode 4, 140 link on on my Facebook group Taylor Phillips's Detroit Sports group if he wants to chime in 231-429-3668 is the number to call and text message call in and text message or text message live on the show The Red Wings held the Blackhawks scoreless and scoreless in overtime. The Red Wings had a cup had a chance or two to put the game away in overtime, but uh, the game went to a shootout. Datsuk uh, Datsuk was stopped by Blackhawks goaltender Corey Crawford, and then Jonathan Taves. Hit one off the post and, it, and then into the net past Jimmy Howard. And the Blackhawks led 1-0 after one round in the shootout. And then it was Gustav Nyquist's turn. And Nyquist uh, beat Crawford five hole with a with a, with a nifty little move, a, a tricky move to, to tie the game up at one in the shootout. Up next was Patrick Kane for the Blackhawks, and he he tried to do his he tried to do his deke, and he had Howard beaten. Except he hit the post, and it never, it never even crossed the line. So it stayed tied at one goal apiece after two shootout rounds, and it was up to Tomas Tatar to to put his team in the lead, and he did. He he did what Patrick Kane did, and he and he did it better than Patrick Kane did. Showed him how it's really done, and and Tatar scored in the back of the net in, in front of Kane's Kane's team's fans and the Red Wings led two to one in the middle of the third round of the shootout Patrick Sharp was the Blackhawks' last hope, and uh, Jimmy Howard actually made a save on on Sharp. And, 
and the game was over. The Red Wings won the shootout 2-1 to one, and the game 3-2. to two. Howard stopped uh, Sharp with, with his left Sharp shot with his left pad. Howard, Howard stopped sh uh, Sharp shot with his left pad. Uh, so, uh, how Jimmy How for Jimmy Howard, he won. He finally wins his first shootout of the season. Finally gets his first shootout win of the season after stopping after allowing only two goals in the last seven shots in the shootout. In his return from a groin in from a slight groin tear injury, <clears throat> which sidelined him for about a month, when he was about to enter the NHL All Star Game two in 2015. So not only is Howard continuing to shine in net in regulation and overtime, he's he's doing better in the shootout. Believe it or not. To all the uh, Howard haters uh, in the shoot, particularly about the shootout. Back to the Jonathan, back to the tying goal with 123 left. Uh, I thought, uh, I thought I wanted Jonathan Erickson to uh, take that, take the puck to the, to the, take the shot by Versteeg to the chin and suffer a season-ending broken jaw, especially because he's ter terrible defensively although he's he's got that rocket of a one-timer in the offensive end he can also hold hold the puck in in the offensive zone very well he is a, he's a he's, he has a tall and strong body to uh, check opposing players to the ice and to the boards. If the Red Wings were to keep it were to keep Erickson on this roster, they would have to reteach him how to play more disciplined defensively instead of just being a total totally dumb coward in his own defensive zone, in his own zone. He needs to quit turning the puck over. He needs to quit quit allowing shots on net. The rest of the Red Wings defense has done has done better than him in terms of blocking shots from getting on net. By the way, I thought I thought that since that that shot went off of Jonathan Taves and and then Nicholas Cronwall and in, I thought I thought that Versteeg goal was, should have been given credit to should have been given to Jonathan Taves and Versteeg and thus Versteeg Chris Versteeg should have picked should have picked up an assist. And, and as for the sod goal that was offside, the sod goal, even Eddie Olchek, the color commentator, and Pierre Maguire both that both mentioned that that the play was offsides, and they were right. So for the for the Homer Red Wing fans out there that still 
that still hate Eddie Olchuk and don't even care. Crybaby! How long are you going to keep whining like a child? You're just a crybaby! A coward! You might as well... Hey! Listen to me! Yeah, you better listen to Eddie Olchuk and Pierre Maguire better instead of just muting the TV. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Olchuk sucks. He's a Blackhawks slappy. That is not what I want to hear. Ah, shut up. That's not really that's not really a professional fan, guys. That's being a typical homer of a Red Wings fan. A homer is Let me say this one more time. Let me explain what a homer is one more time. A homer is a type of fan is a type of sports fan that only represents his team and hates all the national media, including the announcers like Mike Emmerich, Doc, Mike Doc Emmerich, Eddie Olchuk, and uh, Peter McGuire, and Joe Buck, and and they hate the league and its officiate officiating and and, and referees. It include that includes re referees and linesmen including the NHL, the NFL, and the Big Ten conference referees, and the, ML the MLB umpires. That's what a home, that's what a homer is. If you keep if you keep whining and crying about it, you're viewed as a crybaby. How long are you going to keep whining like a child? You're just a crybaby. And I don't allow that on my show. I'm sorry. The Red Wings continue their road trip Saturday, that's tomorrow, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. In Dallas against against Jamie Benn and the Dallas uh, Jamie Benn, Carrie Lettinen and the Dallas Stars. I will post a preview link, preview article link, on my Facebook page page and group later on this week, later on this weekend, either tomorrow late afternoon. Unless uh, DetroitRedWings.com has it. Look at the schedule here on DetroitRedWings.com. On DetroitRedWings.com. Nope, I I don't see it. Well, I can look on the home on its home page. No, it's not there either, so it's it's not even. But I could look at the standings here. Wow, it's already 10 minutes, already 10 minutes, already less than 11 minutes left. Right now, the Red Wings stand in fifth place in a, in a three-way tie for fourth place with the New York Rangers and the Washington Capitals with 74 points. The Lightning have are in third place with 78. And, and there's a tie for first place between the Montreal Canadiens and the New York Islanders with 79 points each. The, Penguin, the Pittsburgh Penguins are in seventh place in, in the East with 73, and the Bruins are in eighth with 65. The Panthers, the, 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 the Boston Bruins, the Florida Panthers uh, are just one point behind the Bruins with 64 in ninth place. Followed by the flat the Philadelphia Flyers in 10th with 59. 
the Ottawa Senators in 11th with 56, the Columbus Blue Jackets in 12th with 55, the New Jersey Devils with 53, and the Toronto Maple Leafs with 51, and the Carolina Hurricanes with 47. The Dallas Stars are in 11th place in the Western Conference with 62 points, six back of the eight, the San Jose Sharks in the eighth spot with 68. After after the Red Wings Stars game, the Red Wings go out to California and play the Sharks, Kings, and Ducks. In no particular, I don't, know, I don't know the order yet, but. Let me see. They play the Ducks, Kings, and Sharks, and then, and then they wrap up their road trip next Saturday in Nashville at 3. The next five games, but the last five games of this road trip are on on Fox Sports Detroit. Then they return home on NBCSN's Wednesday Night Rivalry. Welcome to the to Joe Louis Arena when they take on the New, the New York Rangers. The first, the, the tie for first place, New York Rangers, for a two, for beginning of a short two games, uh, two game homestand, two game, two game uh, home stanza. Friday they take, Friday March sixth they take on the Flames at seven thirty on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. That means they're going to be on one hundred one point one FM, and the Pistons are going to be on twelve thirty AM WGRY in Grayling. Well, the Michigan State Spartans, shifting to college basketball, destroyed the Michigan Wolverines 80-63 at Chrysler Center Tuesday night. The Spartans have momentum. The Wolverines are just reeling and falling apart. The Wolverines have lost four straight. Both teams have off until Sunday. The Wolverines host a tougher team in the 24th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes Sunday at 1 on CBS and then on and then on the same night, on the same day at nighttime, 7.30, the Spartans take on the Illinois Fighting Illini in Champaign, Illinois for a very even matchup. Spartans are 18-8 and eight and the Illini are 17-9. and nine. Both, both records are overall. There should be a link at, to msuspartans.com a bit later this weekend about that matchup. But I think the I think the Buckeyes will crush the Wolverines. The Wolverines just can't seem to get their winning their momentum or their winning ways back. It's gonna be very tough for the Wolverines in this case to upset the Buckeyes. And finally finally some breaking news just a couple hours ago. In baseball, the Detroit Tigers have signed one-time Tiger outfielder, young outfielder Casper Wells to a minor league contract with an invite to MLB spring training. Casper Wells was drafted by the Tigers in 2005 before making his major league debut in 2010. Since his original stint with the with the Detroit Tigers, he's seen big league time with the Mariners, with the Seattle Mariners, Oakland Athletics, Chicago White Sox and Philadelphia Phillies. He also spent time in the Cubs farm system. He has 25 he has 25 career home runs, fifth most by a Capital Region product product at the major league at the major league level at the major league level from 105.4 1045theteam.com an ESPN radio affiliate in New York that is uh, Schenectady New, New York Schenectady New York
He will report to spring training in Lakeland, Florida. The question, the big question is, will Casper Wells be a backup outfielder to Jonas Cespedes and J.D. Martinez while Rajay Davis and Anthony Ghost both platoon with each other in the center field position? Or will Steven Moya be the backup? Or will, will Tyler Collins be the backup? It, it's all even between the, the three. We'll see how uh, spring training goes this year for Moya, Collins, and Wells. That's going to do it for uh, Taylor's Detroit Sports Episode 140. Enjoy the Pistons game. Thanks for downloading and listening live for those of, for, for those of you that did, if you did. Check out my, all my Spreaker episodes of Taylor's Detroit Sports on iHeartRadio, additionally. I will talk to you this Sunday night at 11 on Blog Talk Radio, and then later next week on back here on Spreaker, unless uh, I have a surprise podcast either tomorrow or Sunday. Till then, TTFN, ta-ta for now.